I am here at Sand Hollow State Park in Hurricane, Utah, getting ready to watch the off-road record games. That is the registration line there to my left, and I just waited in that line. It took about two, two and a half hours. The next morning, we all met up over at the boat ramp and waited on shuttles to come pick us up. For as many people as there was, the shuttles did a really great job. There was multiple locations with a ton of people. The first thing I saw when I got off the shuttle was Ed's Golden Nugget. This thing was gorgeous, and that's my first time ever seeing the Samurai. But that Rokon and the trailer to go with the Golden Nugget, and they did a really fantastic job. Looking at this thing in person, it is hard to believe that's it in the videos before they pulled it out and brought it back to life. And they did such a great job. This thing just looks flawless. After I finally pulled myself away from the Golden Nugget, I wandered into Fabrat's booth. Here is Ben's Jeep they've been working on, and here is the FJ45. This thing is pretty awesome. They have a, a lot of videos on the complete build of this thing from pretty much start to finish. And I got to go out by there last year. They let me sit in, they didn't let me drive it, but I got to meet Ben and his mom, and they are just, they, it, they made for an awesome experience. If you got a chance to go by there and grab a t-shirt, I definitely recommend it. So after I left that brass booth, I wandered over to Rudy's Adventure and Design. He has a channel as well. First time I saw him was on Matt's Off-Road Recovery. I do believe he is Matt's son. And I watched a lot of this build right here. I remember watching him do recoveries with it back when it was just a Jeep in stock form. And seeing it go from that to this is just mind blowing. But I will say the one episode that I watched that made me cringe up in my seat a little bit was when he cut the roof out. But it turned out really good. One thing I can say, since he's got it this far along, I haven't seen it on the trail doing its thing, but I'm excited to see those videos as they come out. And him and his brother are also doing a C10 build, and that's gonna be pretty interesting as well. That's Those are videos I'm looking forward to. Walking away from Rudy's Adventure and Designs booth, I noticed Casey Liddell's rig sitting next door. Man, that's a big yankum rope. But I got a few minutes to check out his rig and was also checking out how they had this set up. I thought that was pretty neat, but I uh, kind of got to wondering where all the people were at though. The next booth I wandered across was Moab Motorsports, Rory and Trail Mater. Now I've seen this wrecker a lot in the videos, but not near as much as the other wrecker that he's got. I love how he's got the hitches mounted right there on the inner fender well, very handy. Um, the Yankum ropes up the boom. Um, just checking this thing out, the light in the side of the bed there. Never even thought about putting a lot in the side of a bed. I've always put them in the bumpers and stuff like that, but that I can see where they'd be really handy doing what he's doing. Checking out his welder setup, I noticed the fast idle right there beside the welder. Man, that is pretty tough. I, I like that. That way you can just reach right there, idle the truck up as you need instead of you know having to go inside the cab and all that stuff. But all these rigs are just set up. They're all a little different, but they're all set up for the job that they do. Now seeing this thing sitting over here all flexed out, I couldn't help but walk over and check it out. Man, there's just some awesome rigs here. This is at the Milestar booth, Milestar tires, and they've got it sitting here all flexed out. Man, this is just an awesome old truck. But I couldn't help but wonder, where are all the people at? Where's all the records at? Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. I had gotten sidetracked and was missing opening ceremony. So I rushed over there and you couldn't even get to the front of the stage. I just kind of stood in the back and watched to see what was happening next. Here is the BSF recovery team getting their Azusa Rodeo prep for paint. And I would have thought with Robbie Lake being a judge that everybody would have been trying to really be particular about their paint job but now they let the kids paint they let everybody paint it was just really awesome getting to watch everybody getting included into this part of the event and uh, seeing the teams interact with the fans just super cool so 
So it's looking like the games are ready to kick off, the records are moving, and I didn't do my research. I didn't realize they were going to be doing multiple events in multiple different places. So I did my best trying to chase them around and get to see all that I could, but I did not get to see every truck do every event. The first event that I did get to make it to was Fab Rats doing the welding competition. So, to the best of my understanding, they gave them pre-cut metal, had them clean it up, and then turned around and had them weld it back together. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a huge Fab Rats fan, and I figured that this would be their portion of the event. All the stuff I've watched him build on the YouTube channel, he really knows what he's doing, but then I heard Merlin actually did his portion of the event with a homemade welder, and BSF Recovery actually used three batteries linked together. They didn't even use a welder, just three batteries, so that's going to count the points as well. Unfortunately, I missed Merlin doing the flex off. I heard some records across the street, and I got there just in time to watch Matt do the dead pull. The next event I got to see was BSF on the flex off. Now I've been watching BSF recovery on YouTube for years and years and years before I had ever even heard of Matt's off-road recovery or any of the rest of them. And to see this old truck in action, man, it is, it is just a beast. Here comes Rory and Trail Mater. I sped this up just a little bit, but he makes it look easy. Next is the Fab Rats crew and Grandpa Sherm's old truck. The next event I was able to see was Fab Rats on the Dino. Next up on the dyno was going to be the heavy record for Matt's off-road recovery, but it was too wide to fit on the roller. 
Here comes BSF recovery, making a heck of a pass on the dead pull, putting it down. And they do one pull, pulling the banana by itself, and then another pull, pull of blue steel and the more bear. So this was user error on my part. I hit the picture button instead of the record button, and I was holding the phone way over my head, so I never knew. Here is Fab Rats in the rollover competition. Off in the background, you can see Merlin over there just killing the Deadpool. He owned that event, in my opinion. I didn't get to see it any better than this in person, but I did get to see it on other people's YouTube channel, including his, Merlin's Old School Garage. Myself, I'm kind of partial to Merlin's truck. Not only is it just super cool, but it's also the only one there running a diesel. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see Fab Rats do the Deadpool leader. I would just always seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I'm gonna leave a link to all their YouTube channels in the description of this video in case you haven't seen them. That way you can find them easy and check it out for yourself. Yeah. This was pretty much the end of the events of day one of the record games, and I just got to wandering around looking at all the cool rides that have made it in, and there was a lot to look at. There was all kinds of cool vehicles there. Day two here at the off-road record games. It looks like it's a little bit overcast. It was actually sprinkling rain a little bit earlier, but I think we'll be all right. It looked like it was gonna be kind of off and on all day. Man, what some gorgeous views around here though. Uh, people up there playing on the hill, man. Look like a lot of people having a lot of good time. And I'm just trying to figure out what we're gonna start next.
Unfortunately, by this time, my batteries were dead. So I had to go get my phone put on the charger and try to come back and get some more video after my phone charged up a little bit, but that's about all I got at triple seven. A little later on, I wandered by the Premier Power Welder booth, and I gotta say one of those Premier Power Welders is definitely on my wish list. Two more that I wanted to meet while I was there was Holly and Walter with Mischief Maker. And I tell you, they did not disappoint. I got my autographed t-shirt and I got my picture taken with them. And man, just, I know I keep saying it a lot, but just an awesome group of people here. So after a short wait in line, I got me a Fab Rats hat that was autographed by all of them. And it's the first time I got to meet Paul and Michelle. After leaving Fab Rats booth, I went back across to Rudy's Adventure and Design and got a picture with him and then was on off to explore around a little bit more. Just by itself, this thing is a pretty bad ride, but one thing that makes it even cooler than that is he actually drove it from Lake Havasu, Arizona up to uh, Hurricane Utah, flat towing a Jeep, and even went through the airport in Las Vegas and picked up a buddy to give him a ride to the record games. I'm a pretty big fan of Merlin's Old School Garage, and I've seen this truck quite a bit, but the more I learn about it, the cooler it gets. Another person I'd hope to meet while I was here is Send It Ruby with Send It Nation. And I watched her, a lot of her videos. And I, one thing that's blowing my mind about this event is you watch people on YouTube and when you actually get to meet them, they're just as awesome in person as they are on YouTube. And it just makes for a really good time. Anybody that watches my videos know I stay on the interstate quite a bit, but I saw this product, Easy Flight. For someone who was airing down and airing up quite a bit, man, this thing is awesome. You run one air hose around all four tires, hook it to one compressor, or when you're airing down, you just turn the valve and watch the gauge. When you get all four tires down to 10 or 12 or eight, whatever PSI you want, you turn it off. And then when you're ready to air it back up, you hook it to the compressor, watch all four tires come up at the same time, and it even has a quick coupler for the valve stems. Never seen that before. It is day three of the record games and it has started raining again. I'm gonna take it as my cue to wrap this up and get my butt back to work. So, um, and for anybody who is the first time to my channel, uh, my name is Charles Farmer. I haul campers out of Indiana and just take them out all over the country and put out a video every Tuesday night at seven o'clock. That sounds like something you might be interested in. Most people catch an interest in the old truck. It's a 2018 Silverado with 489,000 miles on it at this point. And I think most people just waiting to see when it pops. But anyway, I'll try to pull down here and get a picture of the truck on the beach. And I'm gonna get on my way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video.